I accidentally became a meme. And this is that story. My name's Drew Scanlon, and some of you may know me as the blinking white guy meme. I was working as a video producer at a website that covers the video game industry called Giant Bomb. Part of my duties as a video producer, I not only was shooting and editing a lot of video, but because we were a really small team, uh, everyone was always on camera kind of all the time. Uh, and we, we did this weekly show called Unprofessional Fridays uh, for our premium subscribers. And it was basically just us sitting around uh, playing a bunch of video games. The Giant Bomb fans are amazing and they're very, <laughs> they're very passionate. So um, there were animated GIFs being made of us constantly. So that part was not really new to me. When that happened, it always was sort of contained within the Giant Bomb community or like maybe video games at large. The video the meme was recorded in just one of these sessions where we get together and play games. Uh, and my, my coworker Jeff was playing a game called Starbound, which involves uh, farming and he said uh so i've been doing some farming with nice. my uh with my hoe here i can kind of till what, the what kind of a so what is that what kind of a and that's the reaction i made to that sort of double entendre i guess uh and it was just like one joke in a two-hour show it didn't at the time it didn't stand out as anything particularly special i think one of the weirdest things is that Four years went by between the film, when that video was shot and when the meme kind of reached its critical mass. I don't really know why that happened. Uh, I always just attribute it to internet chaos theory. The point where I noticed that it had sort of blossomed into this larger thing, like outside of the gaming community, was people mentioning to me on Twitter that they saw it used somewhere else. Like their mom used it on Facebook or something. Like she has no idea who you are, but she used it on Facebook. And there were also a lot of tweets uh, using it that had like tens of thousands of likes and retweets. Once I got a sense of how large it was, it, it was honestly a little scary uh, because it felt very much out of my control. I mean, nothing on the internet is within anyone's control, really. But uh, it just, there's something about the scale that was a little alarming. I was very thankful that uh, that, that clip was fairly innocuous. Something I said may have been twisted into something bad, or uh, it could have been more embarrassing. Like, that has certainly happened to people on the internet. At some points, it almost doesn't feel like me. Like, I just made a face on a live stream. Uh, it, was, it was other people that, you know, trimmed that out and then discovered a way to use it. There's still not a lot of association with, with me. People think it's Carrie Elways, they think it's Michael C. Hall. And so you really have to dig a little bit to figure out, to, can, to trace it back to, again, a real person. I have been recognized one time uh, as the meme guy because of the fact that it was so long between the filming of the video and when it kind of got popular. I looked pretty different. Like I, I had more facial hair, my hair was longer. So uh, shout out to uh, the guy at the Dublin Best Buy. <laughs> Memes are this weird different thing. They're different from, you know, celebrities like actors or something. People expect actors to be real people. They don't necessarily expect that, and this is just my theory, they don't necessarily expect that from memes because memes come from the internet. I don't know that people necessarily will notice someone and say, hey, I think I know that guy from a meme. It actually happened right at the time where I was leaving Giant Bomb to start Cloth Map. Cloth Map is a video project uh, on YouTube, but it's supported by my audience on Patreon. <laughs> Some people, I think, jokingly associated, like, ah, oh, Drew's a big meme now, so he's gonna go out on his own, <laughs> when like, there was no correlation there at all. My audience sends me around the world to explore different countries through the lens of the games and sports that they play. Games are a lot like food. They're this thing that people come together uh, and do with their family and friends, uh, and it's a commonality across all cultures. On a, a trip for Cloth Map, I went to Brazil, and I met some people who uh, had heard somehow that the guy from the blinking white guy meme was coming. Like, not, that was not, I wasn't there to be a meme, I was there to like, you know, ask them questions about video game development in Brazil. And they were all very excited to, to meet me, which, you know, that was strange, but, uh, but kind of fun. Which I think, strange but kind of fun, kind of sums up the whole thing. I think virality is a weird thing. I think if you chase it, uh, it doesn't come. I think 
people are really good at detecting deception and when people are being inauthentic, that is uh, easy for humans to detect. I think if, if, if this happens to you, uh, I think my advice would be just to embrace it. Uh, you, can't, you can't hide on the internet, so um, whatever is out there is out there. Uh, and just uh, try as best you can to have fun with it.